So welcome back then, and uh, apologies if you heard my cough there. It sounded to me like the microphone was live. Nah, it's fine, it's fine. No. It's my birthday. Yes, I you can, can cry if I want to. Or cough. Or cough. That or would anything make, else. Uh, really shitty sound. Like call you Daniel the Klein. <laughs> Zenon the Klein. <laughs> bit, of, a bit of a mixture fine, between I'll the names. My name. So, game number three, Kurz versus SK. Obviously, scoreline tied at 1-1. One, one winner is going to finish in third position here, which is not only more cash, but more points for the uh, season two and circuit as well. You get up on stage. That's and the you most get, important yeah, thing. Yeah, you're a part of the ceremony. Yes. You get a check. Yep, that's true. Yorick first ban. Uh, yeah. Anyone surprised? No. Okay, good. No, All not right. surprised. Carthus banned. SK will always ban Carthus. And actually, this matchup was the first matchup where we saw Alistair banned so far. Let's see if they're going to do that again. Um, otherwise, he was either left open or you know picked very early if, yeah. on, on teams that like him uh, for their jungle. Um, let's see what the curse or let's curse wanna ban and if curse wanna play with the normal lineups because you know what they did better with extinct on that vein. Why not do it again? There is a Cogmo ban. Yeah. Cogmo obviously was a problem. Uh, they obviously don't want to be playing him, otherwise, you know, yep. with having first pick you just pick him, right? Yeah. Uh, so they obviously don't want to go down that route. Yeah. Uh, the, you said that there's other ways of dealing with Kogmo, and um, well, that's certainly true. Uh, if you leave the Kogmo to the enemy and just say, well, we're going to deal with him some other way, you are forcing your options. You are forcing yourself to find a way to of deal with, with Correct. him. Correct. And that means you have fewer options of what you want to do. And the least surprising ban in the world of League of Legends, Urgot, has been banned. Guess Mal fights in these last two as well, and Shen. Mm -hmm. That would not be surprising at, at the moment. Um, for Curse, I'd leave that open and take one of them. Actually, yeah, yeah, they they still need to ban something there. Shen has a sort of a similar uh, position, but actually a Nunu ban coming out of Curse. SK have valued that Nunu super highly, and apparently they just didn't want to first. What? They didn't want to first pick him, but there's not going to be a silent pick, is there? Possible. Well, maybe Maluno likes playing Zion Man. Who knows? Or Amumu. Mm -hmm. uh, the Amumu, actually, I have to say, I did like it last game. It wasn't quite enough, but it was. Uh, it looked pretty strong. It looked pretty good, especially with the Oriana ball on top of it and Amumu going in for the that perfect combo. There's lots of champions that do that. Jax does that a lot. Shivana likes doing yep. that as well. Lee Sin as well. Just carry the ball to your enemy. And that's a little nuance about uh, Oriana play that the top teams have really only started figuring out ever since Oriana has seen that resurgence in play. And there is the Alistair first pick. I think that's going to be locked in for Meluno, who really likes being super aggressive in the jungle. There it is. Yeah, and that doesn't surprise me at all. We've seen uh, Snoopy is, the, I guess, the number one example of uh, jungle Alistair through yeah. this tournament. And we'll maybe even see a bit of that in the grand final against Moscow 5 as well. You know what I just noticed? Nautilus. Has has he been picked this tournament at all? No. Nope. He completely fell out of favor, and he has a very similar role to to Alistair, where he just walks around, and is this super disruptive force in all the lanes. But people have been valuing Maokai definitely over Nautilus this tournament. Yeah, I mean, if you think back to Dreamhack to MLG, he was there. He was in, uh, you know, hotly contested. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the time. I think it's simply because uh, CLG would be the team to do it. Uh, Snoopus Nautilus is Snoopus probably the scariest. Nautilus, yeah. yeah. A uh, little bit of trolling, it's just wait for them to lock in there. Um, the uh, Snoopy has been getting a lot of uh, Alistair's and Shen's though, and there is the Shen for SK yep. right now. That could be both top lane and jungle. And the Janna is, well, I think that's the first Janna pick that I remember seeing. May, may have been there before. Right. Corky coming out now with Cockmore Band. That seems to be. That actually seems to be Yellow Star's secondary pick. He likes the Corky uh, if he can't get the Cogmore. So they yeah. may counter pick them there. Corky Soraka is a very safe lane, which is why they can pick it so early. Of course, the Janna could still be an AP Janna in the middle. Or oh, I'd say Graves Janna. Bottom lane. Graves Janna, yeah. That's uh, again very Korean and very like two weeks ago. <laughs> I, I kind of find it funny how quickly the meta changes sometimes, but Graves Janna would have been one of the. Grace Soraka and Grace Chana would have been the most hotly picked uh, lane just a week or two ago at the uh, OGN tournament in Korea, of course. Koreans generally like uh, Graves so much to the point that Lamia refers to him as Kimchi Graves. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if they uh, lock him in with this one. Obviously, uh, AP carries 
both to come out unless this Janna is in fact gonna be in the middle. It's yep. possible. There is Ash and there is Gragas. Obviously nice. Gragas played by uh, Ocelot earlier on in the tournament. And Ash probably the uh, the next choice. Basically Yellow Star has a list of what he wants to play. And he's like this uh, okay. Very methodical the band man. picked. Yep. That's one that I'm gonna have. There's a target here of course, there's a target combo that they're going for. Uh, arrow on a high value target and then barrel behind that value high value target. Right. Possibly even into a Shen taunt. This is a pick somebody out and kill them lane. CLG have told me that they don't like playing uh, Gragas simply because they don't like pushing the enemy apart. They like the enemy to stay together. So we probably not going to see a Gragas come out of uh, Froggen this, this tournament. Um, but Oslo has been doing pretty well with the Gragas. And it's a, a champion that punishes mistakes. And, oh, Ari is going to be up against him. And this is actually going to be a top lane Shivana, I think. I'm going to say top lane Shivana. What would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I yeah, I agree with you, yeah. Oh. I can't really <laughs> see where else that would go. <laughs> Just yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Just yeah. Yep, there comes a point when everything that needs to be said has been said. And there is an Irelia. I think there's a guy behind us in the audience with a better nerve Irelia sign. He's going to be happy now. Uh, we've seen Irelia, of course, uh, before. And that's going to go on Kevin. Kevin's going to be happy with that. Right now it looks, well, yeah, obviously, Shen yeah. is going to be in the jungle. And right now it looks like Anguish is indeed going to play that top lane Shivana. And Maluno is going to be on his bull from hell. Yeah, it will be Shen in the jungle for, uh, for SK. Don't recall seeing Rani on Shen this tournament. Maybe that's just a slip from the goldfish bowl. That is my brain. <laughs> I have a I have an additional fish tank here that uh, gives me some information from time to time. Not very useful information. Uh, nah, it's 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 fine. It's fine. I I can say things and sound smart. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, I'd also like to point out the ignite on Corky. Normally you mm. see a heal on AD carries, and you actually have a cleanse on on Ash this time. I I do like that. There's a little bit more. Uh, a little bit more vari variability in the uh, picks of the summoner spells there. We are launching into the game right now. This just means Ash is going to be uh, super, super safe there. The lineup, once again, the third time and the last time for this tournament, you're going to see this lineup. Winner is going to take $5,000 home with them. And, of course, the points and the glory of being on stage with Karmak. Yeah, the, just, we could probably talk a little bit about the, uh, the actual difference there. So, you've got 125 circuit points for third. I believe so, yes. And 75 for fourth. It sounds entirely appropriate, yes. 400, 200, 125, 75. Yes, you are good. Exactly. My there's brain's a, working. There's a bit of a difference. It doesn't make a difference for either of these teams. Both Curse and SK are definitely going to be at Gamescom. So it's not like their Gamescom part of the uh, participation is on the line here. Yeah. But of course, it is. Well, let's for seeding there. For seeding, exactly. I don't want to give away too much, but uh, your position in the circuit is going to be important in Gamescom. At Gamescom. Sorry. Ooh. Let's see if they want to go for an invade here. They're currently setting up uh, very defensively SKR in their own red jungle, while Kurs are just taking the most classic invade route in the book, the mid lane to enemy blue. And oh, there is an invade route I haven't seen in a while. SK are going for the, the loop around invade on blue, which is not spotted if you have your scouts positioned near the brush in uh, river. And they're actually going for the long distance loop around. And if they stay here, if they have the patience to wait out the blue buff, this could be super, super strong. But of course, Curse are on their blue buff. Anguish is already going home. Top lane, the first person that needs to go home and get ready for the lane. See if he's gonna wait for a fourth health pot. Doesn't, yeah, actually looks like he's just waiting at the edge of a shop range there. We can see, uh, we can see Curse still set up in blue buff and SK coming in now, invading their own blue buff jungle through that classic invade route. Lots of pings going down. Anguish is not there, so this Joe would oh. be a 5v4. 
It would be a 5v4 and it is all going to kick off here. Curse, they're going to go away. Actually, Barrel does come in. And that ward will reveal the position and Curse, I think, called it. All five were there. We can't stick around for this one. And SK have managed to force them off. So uh, despite some tense early face-to-face um, -face meetings here on the Invade, we are going to go back to uh, a more standard start with no uh, stealing of buffs, at least from this uh, first position. Irelia is going to be late to her lane. She's going to be a few creeps behind. That means she's always going to be uh, behind in leveling up. So we'll have to see if that has an, an, an effect. We can, of course, see Red being picked up here early from Maluno. Very important. This is a sign that he wants to start out aggressively. He did lose a lot of health, health even though Corky helped him there. Kevin and Angus have arrived in the top lane right now. And Angus is immediately pushing that lane. Shivana, of course, known for her pushing power in lane. And Darren has shown us how it's done. Push into third, yeah. take everything from their forest. Yeah, that's the uh, the strength of the Shivana uh, in that top lane. Interested to see how uh, the whole Gragas versus Ari lane is going to go for Ocelot. Um, I don't remember against who he played Gragas initially. I don't Was it against either. Curse? I would have in to ask stage? my my stat fairies. Yeah. Both junglers though are now on double buff and are looking to be aggressive. And Shen, I think Joe is going to try and go top lane as we see actually Slapper falling pretty low to a little bit of burst there in bot lane. He's going to be fine. He's going to stick around. Of course, he has Soraka, so he can get healed up again. Yeah, up at top, Angus is actually uh, going to be leaving. Not going to stick around for that one. And uh, that will mean nothing for Shen. Actually, the two junglers in pretty close proximity to each other here. Maluno, I don't think, will spot Shen. He's taking the uh, top side of that ramp, coming back around. And they want to try and get in here onto Ocelot. And actually, oh, he's going to get the combo off. Have they got the damage? He will charge back off towards that turret. And he will stay safe. No first pull just yet. And that's the reason we see Kragas come back into competitive play. We have buffed his body slam so that it gives full movement speed from rank one of the spell on. And that just gives him that additional mobility in the early levels that mm. just allows him to stay alive in mid lane. And we are seeing Ocelot use that very, very effectively here. I think we should have called it belly slam rather than body slam. It would have fit in a lot cooler. <laughs> yeah, and you were right, Joe. He did play the uh, Gragas against Curse before, so they have <laughs> faced his uh, Gragas before. That's surprising me that the, the goldfish bowl up here still remembers something from yesterday morning, <laughs> uh, which is always good news, always good news. Uh, Kevin actually pushing this top lane down. He is actually ahead now in terms of the uh, levels. Interesting. I wonder how that happened. He must have pushed Angus out, or Angus must have Angus won't. Angus went home. Ah, and there's Maluno coming in now with the double buff as well, but he's not going to get in range. The early double buff is a slower route to six for a jungler, so if you go for an early double buff, you definitely want to make it uh, pay. And so far, hasn't really for either of the junglers, but Shen is going to find Maluno here. Maluno actually just gets a headbutt in. Not pulverizing, meaning he does not want to pick any fights. He saw Shen coming and he knew he needed to get out of there. In bot lane, though, Cynic taking a lot of poke there. Slapper gets exhausted as well. Not sure if they really want to just poke against Soraka because Soraka can heal everything back up. And if they get poked in return, well, they have a Janna. She can shield him, she can't really heal him. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, something they have to change. Here we go, Pulverize combo coming in there onto Ocelot. And well, the charm landed, but again, they've not quite got that damage to finish him off. Only a very low HP remaining, but low HP is still low HP rather than dead. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And you get nothing for almost killing someone. Well, you get them to go back, so that's nice. Slapper and Yellowstar have been playing very aggressively against each other in the bot lane. Um, in mid lane now, we uh, <laughs> actually, as I said, he switches, of course, about lane. Uh, we can see Slapper pushing Yellow Star into turret, and this has been happening for a while right now. We see it reflected in the CS just a little bit, but the wave, of course, hitting turret right now, so he is going to catch up there a little bit. So both Maluno and Arane are a little bit behind where they would like to be. Ari on her first back buying two rings, two Doran's rings, of course, meaning she wants early presence in the lane, she wants the mana regeneration to push Ocelot out. Ocelot, of course, can just take a swig from his barrel and be fine, regenerating mana and health because he's just that OP. Well, here we have Corky once again down in this bottom lane, putting the pressure in onto Janet. Uh, taken decently low there. 
Yeah. I say that and he wasn't even uh, that much. No. Uh, look at the uh, health bar off to the side. I thought he'd done more damage than he actually had. Well, the CS down in this bottom lane, 44 for Corky to the 43 of Ash. So that just shows you how close this bottom lane is. Obviously, uh, Yellow Star not getting his Cogmore this time. Yeah. Maluna bought a uh, Philo Philosopher Stone, so the standard uh, jungle alley coming out of him here. Heart of Gold on Shivana as well. Heart of Gold also on Gragas though, and this is something that's rather modern. Actually, we see again Slapper pushing into the turret, Cynic taking the turret shot there as well. The Heart of Gold on Gragas, let's talk about that for, uh, for a second. It's uh, a pretty interesting choice, as you wouldn't think that he normally needs health, but People have figured out that GB10s are just so valuable that the little bit of stats that they give are enough to justify going for that gold gain. And then if it goes to the mid-late game, it actually is quite an advantage. And still, Slapper, I've said it three or four times already this game, Joel, being aggressive, pushing into tower. Yeah, pushing straight in there. No messing around with this one. And well, we can see that Shen now coming off towards that blue buff, which has respawned. Maluno has just finished the red. The question is, will he go down and check that blue buff or will he go for a bit of a steal? Doesn't look like it. Angus doing his uh, normal Shivana thing of just pushing, pushing, pushing his top turret. Not seeing him actually uh, wander off towards those golems, but I'm sure that must be happening at some point. He's actually wandering off to the larger golem as we yeah. see Gragas pick up his blue buff. There we see again uh, the dragon Shivana coming down into mid lane. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, he wasn't going for the red, apparently didn't feel safe enough. Ari, Ari said, I can't help you with red right now, I need to take my blue as well. Maluna just patiently waiting as that happens. And Ash has gone back, has bought herself two Dawn Spades, finished the Berserker's Crease. Um, the Sheen coming out of Corky earlier, something we see a lot on Corkys where they, they think they can wait a little bit with the level 2 boots because all positioning mistakes, errors that they might make can kind of be undone by a good Valkyrie. Yeah. This is very true. So Rania there getting that red buff finally and may have a look at this Ari in the middle. Obviously uh, up to level 7 now, not the easiest to be locking down, that's for sure. Unless of course there comes a, there's a perfect Ash arrow from bot lane, I would love to see that. But these teams, yeah. they call out the arrows and uh, Ari would have all the time in the world to just, just slowly walk away from there and be safe. Well, Gragas is still coming to uh, lane, so certainly won't happen just yet. But both AP carries do have that blue buff on, so uh, got that mana regen. Maluno's just uh, walked his way into that top lane. That was an interesting way to go about things. Yep. Not sure uh, what he's trying to achieve by doing that. Maybe they want to push this uh, lane out aggressively. Meanwhile, down in bottom, we can see their Slepper having to Valkyrie out. More to uh, limit the amount of damage that he took. Obviously, he's got that heal constantly there for him from Soraka. On the other side, you've got Janna who can shield, but not give you anything back. The important thing to, for Slipper to keep in mind is actually, as we are looking at top lane there, RNA is coming in. Angus uses the Dragon's Descent to get out, and he's going to be fine. The important thing to keep in mind for Slipper is that if he goes all in on that Yellow Star in bot lane, there is a Shen that can jump in from uh, Yellow Star. Yellow Star can hold him in place with the arrow. By the time the arrow is over, actually we see Extinct and also the fighting. By the time the arrow is over, Shen can taunt and that can backfire very quickly. So he needs to be smart about his aggression. Extinct uh, back in uh, mid lane, farming normally Maluno, just blue pilling, doesn't even want to wait it out as Kevin and Anguish are still fighting in top. Arane is now in the brush and may want to look to get in on Anguish here. See if that's gonna happen. There's a flash taunt, uh, it misses. Oh. Another flash coming out of Anguish, though, so it's a flash for a flash. That's an even exchange, says Math. Which is an interesting way to go about it. I mean, I think he would have been safe there anyway, but obviously doesn't want to give away first blood. But we're uh, ten and a half minutes in, still no first blood. This could be a dangerous time, though. Volley coming out from Yellow Star, but that ulti off Slepper doing a fair amount of damage back. Mm -hmm. A shield keeping him uh, that little bit more healthy, but. If we look at the CS, 89 to 82. So Slepper still with a slight lead, but not really too much to uh, write home about. I think a couple of tower hits there onto Cork. They have backed down in this bottom lane. Decided not to keep pushing. Kevin actually pushing onto Angus, but again, 
think he's just a little bit too healthy to be uh, thinking about first blood on him. It's an now. interesting matchup with Irelia and Shivanato, but it doesn't look like either of them can kill the other. And they both they have a, a healthy amount of respect. There's the ping going down on Maluno, so they know he's here. And once again, Maluno just walks into lane. What is he doing today? Today is not gank day. Today is just show up and do stuff day, I guess. Um, uh, of course, sometimes you are in a lane already, you wanted to gank, you realize from their movement they must have a ward, so you may as well just come in and, I don't know, tax the lane a little bit for your intention to gank. You're really there, just sticking down another ward in the tri-bush. And Maluno caused a little bit of alarm there amongst SK. They basically have four of them now in the bottom side of their jungle, which is kind of cool because they could uh, even think about doing dragon now. Yeah, especially Once with they Extinct. realize that Extinct is in this top lane. Exactly. Oh, has Kevin realized that though? If Kevin goes in on Anguish right now and gets a charm to his face, that could end very, very badly. Anguish is baiting it. You can see how aggressively he is moving. He's even almost taken some tower shots. Uh, he's now pushing in into the third. Now Kevin goes up and there is the ulti and the charm hits as well. There's a Shen ultimate, a very good reaction time there. Kevin unfortunately moving a little bit too defensively for Aaron to follow it up with a taunt, but I think they just wanted their top lane to stay safe. But Joe, we are 12 and a half minutes in and there's no first blood, no dragon, no nothing. No dragon, no nothing up until yet. Real close game. Neither team wanting to... Uh, Step a foot out of line. You, you often get that in best of threes, obviously, uh, with the final one. Yeah. They played through two games and they're like, well, now's not the time to do stupid things and maybe, uh, you know, throw it all away. Absolutely. And let's see what we're going to uh, be having here. Shivana just picking up the uh, Madrid Razor. The boots are already on Alisson. He just bought that Oracle as well. And as far as I'm aware, there is currently no Oracle on, on, on Shen. Alex. That's correct, yes. So that's going to uh, give this early uh, vision advantage over towards Curse, especially since he's got the, uh, <laughs> the boots of mobility on and he's going to be moving around, clearing out faster as he goes. Mm -hmm. Down at bottom, Yellow, uh, Yellow Star and Slepper again exchanging that damage, but that's really all they're doing. There's a Valkyrie used by Slepper to uh, get himself oh, nah. back and safe. And that was a bit of a weird thing to do, to put that ward in the brush, but not actually check if there was a ward in the brush. Yep, they is doing that now. Luno comes back, does that one, but that's going to force the bottom lane of SK to say, OK, probably got time to go by now, since he's cleared out the wards and we're going to need some of our own. And it's probably also a good time to prepare for Dragon, especially if you can get a new best friend from the shop. The best friend sword picked up by Ash there is going to be a lot stronger than Corky on just a sheen right now. So if they fight for a Dragon, you know, now it's just a pretty good time in general. Uh, Oslo has not finished his uh, Royal of Ages quite yet, but he is going in with a perfect ultimate, wow. throwing Extinct in the best possible position for them. Extinct actually uses his own ultimate to get away, so that's a flash and an ultimate that they got out of Extinct there. And this should signal the Dragon, and yes, there comes the ping from SK. Uh, let's go for Dragon right now. Yep, looks like they're uh, going to go in for that. Actually, Shen is there as well. Yeah, uh, the top lane's going to stay as it is, but that instantly gives SK that bit more of an advantage because Ari, low HP, probably not going to come down to uh, try and steal this one away. The question is, will Maluno headbutt pulverize in there and try and smite Dragon? I mean, the presence has actually done enough here from Curse to force SK to totally back off. Meanwhile, up at top, we've got a bit of an exchange. Angus is actually going to get ignited. There is the first blood. He comes on to Kevin as he dives in there on the tower. And uh, slowly but surely be working up to that one. And that is the initial lead for SK. 15 minutes in, first blood. They did not want to fight the Dragon 4v4. I'm not entirely sure why they were so scared. I think it's just the amount of disruption coming out of uh, Alistair that they were a little bit afraid of there. Uh, well, it would have been 4v3, really, because Ari was low. That is true, yeah, it would have even been a 4v3, so they definitely should have taken the fight. We see more pokes going on in bot lane there, Yellowstar. She dodging that one rocket there and Slepper is going to Valkyrie away and gonna be fine. And that's right, with Ari at below half health with no flash, no ultimate, yeah. would have been a good time to fight, but you know what? Better safe than sorry and SK are very serious about wanting this third place here. And there's been a lot of predictions of uh, how this tournament would go out. Most of them put M5 and CLG in the first two places, so well done if that was one of you. That is indeed going to be the case. And a lot of them also put Curse in third place, and Oslo was like, no, we are going to be I put in MYM the top three. in third place. I put Ace in third place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> We're rubbish at that game. I'm not playing next time. Nope. And well, we are going to see Dragon being started off now by Kurz. Angus already got that one uh, kicking, and it looks like they decided, well, don't feel too comfortable with how this is going down. The interesting thing is SK coming somewhat split into that one. But they've done enough to force, at least for now, Curse away from the Dragon. Yeah, so once again, no Dragon picked up the first, but it's still on SK. They are practically no gold ahead. It's just 300 uh, gold. That's that's next to nothing, basically. Kevin in a little, a lot of danger here, actually, as Slapper also goes low. And Extinct may try to dive in for that, but he's not going to actually go all the way. Slapper, though, in a lot of trouble right now. It's also his enemy. He is exhausted. The barrel may... Oh, it's just not quite enough. The barrel was perfectly positioned from Ocelot there, but just not quite enough. Yeah, I think the thing is he realized that it wasn't going to catch up to him at least. And once yep. that barrel's gone, he's probably not going to have another one or yep. anything else to throw at him uh, to be able to finish off that kill anyway. Meanwhile, both teams gathering up inside this window, just showing you how uh, you know, tense this one is. Both teams not wanting to give the other uh, control of that dragon area. And actually, dragon is going to get, is it going to be started? No, they just put on to put more wards in there and check that there weren't wards inside of that pit. Maluna it was with the Oracle. And now Nif is going and they'll see that there with the minions on middle and that could well be the signal to start. Yeah, that is exactly what it looks like yep. right now. Ash is in base, could send an arrow over, but I don't know that they want to fight without her presence. She has bought the pickaxe as well. And Kragas has also finished the uh, Rod of Ages. Also a lot of has, and that it looks like that dragon is actually gonna go to Blue team, all right. Well done, Meluno. You found the smite button. I would not have smo smitten smote. That. I would not have smitten that. I, I I smote, but I would have smitten, right? I think. Never mind. I don't think I would have managed to do that actually. Uh, so well, well done there. Um, and Ocelot's ultimate is down, but of course, Gragas' ultimate is really not on a long cooldown at all. So right now. 18 minutes into the game. Such a ridiculously close game. Uh, actually, down at the bottom there, we've just seen a uh, Valkyrie in towards Ash. The question is, have they got enough to go in there and finish this one off? Not quite. Yellow Star again going to just walk away from that one. And yeah. we are, in fact, not at all looking up the uh, past tense of Smite now. That would be totally unprofessional of us, uh, but this is not the right language. This is West Friesian. You looked it up in West Friesian. All right. Eh? Yes. Uh, no, that's English. Oh, there you go. Scroll up, scroll up. Yes. So we have uh, Smitten there in the... Ah, I see, I see. Interesting. So Smote is definitely the past tense, uh, and Smitten may be the past participle in some cases, but maybe not in all. So let's concentrate on the game instead. How about that? The blue buff is going to go to Oslo, but I was honestly uh, curious as well. Freak once discussed French grammar with me for half a game, and he just would not stop because he was sure he was right. <laughs> Which is good. It's a good quality in a caster, being sure that you're being right. Being able to just talk about, about something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fit. Usually in between the games where there's, uh, you know, some time to fill. Right now, back on topic, Kevin doing the uh, red buff to get back up into his lane. Obviously, uh, that bottom tower has now fallen. For the uh, first turret taken down. Slep is actually uh, working his way into the top, so the AD and support lane is coming up to this top side maybe want to uh, get this tower down as quickly as they possibly can Arani actually uh, coming in here i'm not sure that slepper and zinek can really deal with this one there's the valkyrie away but kevin dashing over onto zinek the ignite is burning there goes Arani in as well Arani now the one falling low he's trying to get away there he is finished off by slepper and that will be one for one that was a fail ultimate ocelot uh, but luckily nifs here to uh, tank all the damage from the tower and nearly die in the process as well but a good reaction nonetheless there for SK to come around and uh, turn that into their own curse. On the other hand, are pushing the inner bottom turret up right now. What actually happened there, Slepper did get the kill onto Arane by hitting the rocket off of Kevin. But now we actually see Extinct jumping in there. Anguish is very, very deep in as well, but SK look like they want to be able to defend this. Ang and Nif taking so much damage. Anguish was exhausted. A very, very good hat, but there is going to keep them just barely safe and Maluno is going to walk out of there and going to be fine. Oh, there goes a howling gale. Just stopping before it clips Maluno's heels. And Gragas actually gets hit there by the charm. 
which won't mind uh, he won't mind too much coming in, but then decides, okay, you know, we're not going to be able to uh, chase this one down and finish things off, and backs away. So three one. 400 gold lead it is for Curse. Obviously, uh, after taking that dragon, really helping things out. And two for two in turrets. Yep. This is still a, a very pinch game. I mean, I'm impressed the way that um, SK actually managed to react to things there to uh, switch themselves back over to this top lane. Less impressed I was with Ocelot's ultimate, uh, but still they got the job done at the end. He still has a couple of chances to redeem himself with a couple of uh, clutch barrels, and I know that he likes these kinds of champions where he can do these kinds of plays that really stand out and are frankly going to end up in a highlight reel or two. We see an Avarice Blade on Shivana, which is a really strange choice to me, but I guess it makes sense if you really want to have two GP10s. You're not going to get a filler stone, you're not going to get a lucky pick, so might as well get the Avarice Blade, but it's just a very, very strange item. I don't think she's going to build it into a Yumus Ghost Blade. Does it build into anything else? I don't even think so. Mm. <sighs> Probably I can't not. remember. I yep. can't remember. So it's, a, it's a strange pickup. Curse uh, cleaning up wards here in River. They're not really setting up for Baron, even though it kind of looks that way. You need to. You can take it for a second, Joe. I need to sync myself because I got desynced again. Yeah, sure. Of course. All right, now we have... Curse actually uh, getting themselves a little bit more together. Cork is just farming and pushing this top lane out. Obviously, the outer turret is still up on this top lane for SK. Angush there just having a uh, bit of a peek through the jungle, seeing what was going on. And Slepper could well take this turret down. Shen is starting to come in there, but I'm not sure that Slepper is going to be too uh, about that one. There is the turret taken down. He's going to be focusing a little bit in. And there is the ultimate from Ocelot, used defensively to push Curse away. But Extinct actually just uh, dives in there. There goes the Ash Arrow. It's landed onto Angush, thanks to a great move there from Extinct. Kevin's coming in here as well. Angush starting to go very low. There's the kill for Yellowstone. I'm not sure that Maluna is going to escape this one. It's a double kill for Ash. And they could even push for a little bit more from that one. But in the end, safe than sorry is what they were aiming for. Uh, but Slepper's still pushing, by the way, up yeah, the top. Slepper, what he ended up doing is he ended up pushing Arane out of lane, got him down to about a third health. Arane had to go back to home to heal. And now Slepper may be in some trouble as they try to cut him off. Oh, look at the mind games there. Let's see if Niv is going to find him. Niv actually does find him, but Niv is by himself right now. Slepper didn't know that. Also, is going to come around. Nice, the rocket, the prediction actually hits. And Ocelot is not going to have the damage. Where are you going, Ocelot? Oh, that was a bit of miscommunication there. It's still going to be a kill, but it, this way, they actually had to use a flash. The second that Chen came in there to help hold Corky down, Ocelot was like, you know what, I'm out. I'm going home. Kevin Steele for the day <laughs> is yep. complete. After Ocelot did all the hard work, then yes, Kevin true. dives in and gets a kill. Uh, Yellow Star actually here pushing down the bottom outer turret for SK, got it down to half HP already, did use a hawk shot to check if anyone was actually coming, and the rest of SK have already started with the dragon. There goes the turret, finally taken down. If we look at the items here, let's uh, just check between the 280 carries. Actually, uh, 210 to 195 CS there. Ash got the kill advantage, and also the infinity edge with two Doran's blades, and over with Corky, Trinity Force is already finished for Ari. Abyssal Scepter, Blasting Wand, Cage's Lucky Pick compared to Gragas' uh, Rod of Ages, plus the Blasting Wand and that Negatron Cloak as well. He's going to be gifted now the blue buff to have that little bit more spam ability. Ash is 400 gold ahead of Corky, and the most important thing is that the gold on Team SK currently is concentrated in that Ash and uh, Gragas. So once Gragas finishes the next big item, I think that's going to be an Abyssal, because he wants to Belly Slam, as we are calling it now, in anyway. So he is going to get everybody in range of that debuff aura. There is an Ash Arrow actually coming. Predicted Arrow, and oh, Slapper just sidesteps barely. But Slapper once again finds himself in trouble. Kevin goes in on him. Niv is going to slow him down as well. And bam, Slapper dying again. Joe, what is he doing? What are Curse doing with this game? Dying. Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's not going well for them. Um, I mean, it started perfectly fine. Oh, this could be dangerous for Oslo. Oh, actually, we're going to see the full team come in there. There was the ultimate, which has actually bought him enough time for the rest of the team to get along. And they could turn this one around. Extinct does land the charm in onto Aranyi. 
Well, SK are going to want to get in there. Kevin actually uh, charging around the back. I was going to say he probably wants to uh, be with the rest of his team for this fight. But they've got that kill onto Extinct for the middle. That's going to give them an 8-1 lead. Are they going to go to Baron? Look at the ward setup. I think they are. Yeah, they're definitely going for Baron. They have the wards ready. They don't have an Oracle on themselves right now, so they don't know if the enemy has vision. But I think they feel safe enough with Ari down right now to do this. And maybe, yeah. maybe Curse can uh, punish them for this. But uh, it could be a very, very bad fight for Curse as well. Ash Arrow is still down, as is the Shen ultimate. Ocelot ultimate just popped back up again. The uh, ultimate from Soraka is ready as well. Anguish needs to attack a few more times to get his ultimate back. Nice use there of the Monsoon just to heal up. And Curse are probably not going to go in there unless they want to go for a perfect seal. Maluno coming in that the barrel is going to keep him at distance. And they blow him up through the ultimate. Slap as the next target. Anguish is going to be focused now. Still wow. no one dead from SK. They turn back to Baron. Pick it up casually. And Joe, it's looking really, really good for SK right now. And I'm so happy because this audience clearly loves SK. Yeah, there is a, uh, a lot of SK fans in the audience, that's for sure. And, you know, they've played well, and I was impressed with them already in that semi-final against CLG, yeah. which they end up losing 2-1. to one. But that could have gone either way as well. I mean, we were looking at parts of that game number two and thinking, wow, is this going to be a 2-0 yep. even for uh, SK? So they definitely deserve it of a third place. Let's not call it just yet, although no, 11-1 is uh, a bit of a telltale sign. And mm -hmm. again, Kevin on Irelia. 406. Uh, Ash, yellow star, brilliant performance from him so far as well at 402. Ocelot, you know, I, I made a joke about his ultimate on that little counter push earlier on, but other than that, he's been absolutely bang on with those barrels. Yeah, exactly. He knows how to position himself. He knows when to wait. I really like the bit of play from Arane that I'd like to call out here as well. When they were chasing down on Arane near Dragon, he waited a very, very long time to see which way Arane would, Arane would go to be able to follow her up with his taunt. And that's just a very calm, cool-headed play that I like to see, even out of passionate Spaniards like that. They can be calm and cool-headed sometimes. <laughs> and now SK are pushing down the uh, mid lane, while Shen is going to keep split-pushing that top lane, I feel. And that's, of course, something you can do if you have a global ultimate. That is something you can do, and it's going to be more and more and more annoying as he continues to uh, get better items and what have you in there. Actually, he's got his uh, recurve bow, so working up towards that wit's end and then he becomes a little bit more dangerous for yeah. Curse to deal with. Yeah, with, Zen, uh, with the Man Magic Mantle, it looks very, very likely. I would still like to see the Ionic Spark if yeah. they want to keep Great going item for that on Yeah, absolutely. But you are absolutely right, he has the Man Magic Mantle, so it's probably going to be uh, the Wit's End. SK holding up the uh, middle area. Actually, there goes the Ash Arrow and Zinex flashed away from that one, but look at that. Extinct comes in from the side. Kevin, uh, Kevin changes his uh, target instantly. Are they going to keep going in here? Gragas ulti is available. Slepper's off to the side. Can they get an ulti in behind him? No, not quite. But Kevin's going to push onto the turret, and you know what Kevin's going to do as soon as they come anywhere near. And this turret's uh, relatively low. He's going to dive straight on top of them. Ocelot is actually off to the side. They know Ocelot's position. Just to the side, down a bit, is yep. Ocelot. Yep, maybe we can scroll there. Yep. There, there he is. We found, um, find I the think they, they, spot, they pinged him anyway, so uh, I yeah. guess they know they put that ward down as well. Yep. And what's happening in top lane is actually that Arane is having trouble pushing back against Anguish. And the other thing is, I think if Arane goes into an ultimate and Anguish pushes him away with Dragon Form, he will cancel the ultimate. Correct. So that is something that Arony needs to be very careful about if you have a split pushing Shen. Yeah, but then it's still a 4v4 anyway, I mean. It's true, it's true. It's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Kevin finds Anguish and Kevin is like, you know what? I have no problem with this little dragon. And wow. Anguish actually will have to jump away from that. Anguish pushing in here. This blue buff is now up for contest. And actually, Anguish, uh, sorry, Extinct is going to be the force of the brunt. And there comes the ulti. Maybe a bit overkill from uh, Ocelot, but nonetheless gets them the kill. And Here's I was going to say, where did the blue buff go? They didn't actually finish it off when they ran away. That's why I was uh, a little bit confused. This is going to be another inner turret taken down. They're going to be down to just those inhibitor turrets on the top and I mean middle lanes. Yep. Bottom would be uh, a prime target open for the taking here, but maybe SK wants to go straight in for this inhibitor turret. Obviously, uh, Kevin with the Guardian's Angel on, 
I think they could end up just fighting at this uh, at this turret under everything. Yep. The it damage from Slepper is actually pretty strong, so that might be just enough to force them back. Yeah, the Guardian Angel, of course, great, great item. There. He can go in and initiate even under turret as long as he just ties them up for long enough to, to get some follow-up kills in there. And then when he comes back from the Guardian Angel, he'll just mop up. But SK have decided enough with this. Let's see, when is Baron actually going to be back? Baron is back at 33.55, so about two minutes for now. And SK are going home to shop right now. They probably want to push out the lanes a little bit. Yep, there goes RNA pushing out bot lane. Well, it's still absolutely safe to do so. And catching up on his farm a little bit as well, which is, of course, pretty important as well. Witsand is now finished on him. The Ash, of course, with the Infinity Edge, Phantom Lancer. And I see a chain list. Joe, is that going to be another Guardian Angel? You'd assume so, I think. They, uh, both both of these... Uh, ooh, what's happened to Yellow Star there? Ah, he just stopped. I was like, really? Did he just disconnect? No, he didn't. He was just holding it until uh, Gragas actually got in there, Joe. Of course he was. Because um, he's a team player. Because he is a team player. Angus actually just <laughs> put his burnout on to uh, run away from that bottom lane. I think he thought they were going to close in around him. Kevin getting more free farm in this top lane. 220 almost CS he's at right now. Which is a slight cut above the uh, Shivana, who's now finished that frozen mallet. The 407 scoreline, of course, even more important than the CS. Dragon is yeah. falling right now. And while there's a little bit of a lull, yeah, the gold advantage in top lane is 1,200 in favor of SK. In mid lane, uh, the difference is actually 1,700. Wow, it's quite a lot. Actually, more than that because I batted map. But the arrow Whoa. is going to find Anguish. And there is an arrow from Oslo as well. Anguish is going to jump away. He is so very, very slow and very, very dead as well. And that was a brilliant, brilliant arrow from Yellowstar, of course, the man with the most brilliant arrow in the history of competitive League of Legends at the uh, finals of DreamHack 2011. Yeah. So that man knows how to shoot arrows. Double ward. Not really planned, but not the end of the world either. It's yeah, it's uh, a good arrow, that one. Not the longest of range of range arrows, but still impressive nonetheless, especially against the Siobhan, who is not an easy target exactly to mm -hmm. hit. She's pretty quick to move. Uh, but we can see that SK, you know, that Baron buff has now run out, and they're like, well, we've just got a load of gold that we want to be spending. Actually, Maluno going to go aggressively into this one. Not really many from SK gone, but they've been caught off guard with this one. There's the ultimate coming out from Ocelot. Maluno possibly going to die from this. Zinect is there. Extinct is there. Extinct will go down. Kevin does get his Guardian Angel popped, and that is going to be another two for zero. And I get the point there from Curse. They wanted to stop that recall, but... Sadly for them, they kind of pushed that onto a group that was bigger than they expected. Um, at the start, it didn't go all that great for them, but I think once SK realized what they were up against, they actually started to fight. Um, it started to go quickly in their favor. There's the arrow. Um, yeah, we talked about how good his arrows are, and then he goes and throws one straight down the middle of a uh, of the pack. Here we go, Monsoon put down from Janet. And is still not quite able to get in there on that inhibitor. The barrel comes down. Big amounts of damage. Abyssal set to needlessly large rod, rod of ages, and a blasting one. So uh, almost up to that death cap now is the 209 Gragas. Also in their team, 604 on Ash. Uh, that could be 614 if Slepper could actually hit one of his ulti blasts. And actually, they're going to get in there for the kill. The shutdown does come around. Corky has finally died, but they're piling in on towards Angusha's position. Can they finish him off? Maluno comes in. That was a great Howling Gale. Maluno does go down. Kevin has managed to all but escape because Angus uh, Extinct is coming in in the back. Does take down Nif. Aranya now needs to get himself out of there. I don't think that Ocelot really has got the damage to uh, sort that out. There is the triple This could be very well a Quadra 4 Extinct, which gives them the biggest chance of this game that they've got to come back. And there it is, the ace. He didn't quite get the Quadra kill. The game denying him of that. I am not sure what happened there. That was a really, really well executed fight from, from Curse. But I, I'm not sure how they survived that long. There must have been, there should have been much more damage than that. And now you said it, yes, Extinct is now... The Deathfire Grasp as well, don't forget on Ari. That ah, takes a yes. big chunk away from whoever they uh, end up focusing on. Right. So I'm actually going to go back to that fight real quick and going to look at it while you can continue talking about what's actually happening. 
so that I can report back to everybody and tell you what actually happened there. That's a good idea. So, Extinct getting himself after uh, what was all but officially a quadra kill. That double buff and Baron is actually up and we are going to see Maluno and Extinct actually going in for that one. Hawkshot comes across so SK know that Curse are in there doing it. Shen obviously uh, in the top lane, not quite so important. He can uh, just teleport in with his uh, with the rest of his team. Actually, his ulti's not quite up just yet, so uh, it's not something they want to let go. There goes the Ash Arrow, lands in onto Extinct. Howling Gale will connect as well. Zinek, the focus of Ash's power, and that will be straight in there. Extinct actually will be forced away. Baron is going to be picked up by SK as well. Great move by SK to get in there and get that one. There's a double kill for Kevin. Here comes the next one. That's a triple kill for Kevin, and that will be an ace for SK Gaming. They've got the Baron. They've got 23 to six kill lead. They've got an open inhibitor here to take down and with 20 seconds before even the support gets up, this could well be game right here. 35 seconds until Corky gets back into the game. Can they finish this one off? They've got plenty of tankiness. There's the Shirelia's pop to uh, give them that extra bit of a boost in case they uh, even needed it. We are going to see the Soraka coming up into this one. Second Nexus turret is going to go down and you can see on your screen SK Gaming take third place at the European Challenger Circuit Poland. A very, very happy team. And you know, this is a new lineup for SK. They've come in good semi final that they ended up losing against CLGU. A great performance here against Curse. Not bad for a new team. Absolutely. They've only really been playing together for about a week or so. And Oslo told me that they have played about 35 games together in this new lineup, which is not too shabby for a week, I would say. So yeah. they have been practicing very hard. And here we see the handshake as well. So very, very important that the fair play Aaron <laughs> feeling very good about himself. And look at all the SK fans in the crowd. They are very happy to see this. Of course, would have been even happier to see them in the finals. It wasn't quite to be, but you know, as Ocelot put it, we are on the way back to the top. It's a, it's a bit of a yeah. long way. It's a long path. But they are working on it. And who knows, maybe at Gamescom we'll see an even stronger SK if they keep practicing in online tournaments. With this lineup and with this sort of performance, I can see them doing great things, Joe. Yeah, and that's exactly what he said. It's not a finished product. We are all <laughs> better than Ferelia. Uh, wait a minute. What did she finish in that one? Um, she went 9, nine one, 1 13. 13. Yep. Solid score. Nerfing now. Actually, for. Uh, <laughs> be right back, nerfing Ferelia. Exactly. Uh, but a real great performance. Yeah. You know, there was this drama around the SK lineup. Kevin, who was the old top laner, moved down to the bottom, then apparently he got bored, <laughs> went back, back to the top, and he's had such a solid event here as Kevin. I've yeah. been really, really oh, yeah. impressed with him. Specifically his Aurelia play, the Yorick play as well was so very, very good from him. Great player. I'm, I'm excited to uh, one, you know, to see what SK can build between now and, and Gamescom. Um, that we see them again. I mean, third place here between CL, uh, behind CLG and Moscow Five is not bad. Can't complain at that for your first event. And let me just say this about internet drama, and I'm going to talk right into the camera because this is an important message. Internet drama. Uh, you don't ever know the full story. You just don't know what's actually going on. And the only yeah, thing, you. yeah, you, you camera. Uh, and the only thing I think that we should uh, care about as fans of eSport is the actual performances, the actual results that teams bring in in uh, tournaments like this. And then, of course, I can tell you now that Oslot is a really nice guy. You don't have to believe me, but uh, I just, you know, take my word for it. And, you know, I think we're going to hear some more from SK Gaming on the stage very soon now. Yeah, we have Carmack down there. Guys, that's it for me and Daniel Klein. Thanks for uh, an amazing tournament on our front. But, of course, we have the grand final coming up next, so don't go anywhere. Oh, great. All right, we are here with Niv from SK, SK Gaming. They just took third place. And, of course, Jaws from Riot. Jaws, take it away. All right, so Nif, first off, congratulations on third place here at ECC Poland. An incredible accomplishment. I know you guys had a ton of support from the crowd. And first off, you guys had a pretty big roster change going into this tournament. Um, what did you guys do to prepare for this tournament with the new members? Mieliście duże zmiany, jeśli chodzi o drużyny. 
dość niedługo przed turniejem. Co robiliście, żeby się przygotować dobrze do tego turnieju? Um, yeah, thanks first. And I'm really happy that we got first and not fourth. And with the roster changes, I think it was needed. And we had one week to prepare and we played like eight hours every day from three till 11. And we trained as much as possible with them. And the new guys are really awesome, I have to say. And especially Yellow Star. I think he's the reason we win. Tak więc trenowali 8 godzin dziennie z nowymi graczami. E, nowi gracze są fantastyczni, e, szczególnie Yellow Star i to jest e, powód, dla którego SK wygrywa. So also, um, how are the team vocal cords doing? Because I definitely heard Ocelot and RNA yelling nonstop. You guys are such a passionate team. Do you feel like that builds up the level of play when you guys are in the middle of the match and they're just going nuts? Pytanie jest właśnie o struny głosowe, czy, czy dały radę? Z uwagi na to, że szczególnie hiszpańscy gracze się bardzo wydzierają podczas meczu. Jak to wpływa na drużynę? Yeah, our team is really emotional and especially our two Spanish players. But I think it's really good. It motivates everyone. They speak a lot and everyone is hyped and want to win and it's awesome. Tak więc drużyna bardzo poddana jest emocjom, emocjom szczególnie graczy hiszpańscy. To jest bardzo dobre z uwagi na to, że podnosi poziom komunikacji i pomaga w zwycięstwach. And finally, do you have anything to say to this crowd who's been so supportive of SK Gaming as well as uh, all the fans at home. Coś do powiedzenia do tutaj do publiczności. Yeah, the support is really awesome. I never expected it, but now Poland is one of our biggest fan community, I guess. And I love you guys for that. Thanks. All right, so that's it from Nif from SK Gaming, who took third place. A teraz do sali. Dostałem taki mały komunikat. Jeżeli jest na sali młody człowiek o nazwisku Michał Kunicki, to twój tata czeka przy wejściu, bo ponad się zgubiłeś. Nie ma się z czego śmiać, to jest bardzo młody człowiek. Tak więc Michał, tata jest przy wejściu, czeka na ciebie. All right, so we're gonna have a short trailer and afterwards we will proceed in bringing you the final of this tournament.